So with both spokespeople up together, and I will come, first raise hand, we'll get the first question. Graham. What an afternoon. Um, what can you tell us firstly about your players' willingness to play in England next week? Is there going to be a strike? You've talked out on one about that. I'm, uh, as far as I'm concerned, just preparing for the game. So, um, And I'm confident that the game will go ahead and, yeah. So no players have suggested to you that maybe on the way? No. What have you made then of suggestions over the last few days that that could be a possibility that the World Rugby Players Association could mandate players not to work? Um, look, in terms of, we understand the frustrations by the players and that things haven't been sorted out between the union and the, and the regions and PRGB which is a joint body uh, equally shared by the regions and, and by the union to collectively, hopefully, f to get an agreement. Um, I'm in complete support of the players in terms of uh, the WRPA, which to me, in my time here, has been incredibly weak as an organisation. And I've stressed on a number of occasions to the players that they need to be stronger, they need to have more voice voices, be, they need to be around the table from from a consultation point of view. So the fact that um, uh, from that regard, I think it's a huge positive for, for the players and that relationship with the union going forward because they need to be part of the, all the discussions that that take place. And so um, I'm sure the players and, and like us, we would like things resolved hopefully as quick as possible. These things have been going on for a long time and um, but all I can focus is, is concentrating and preparing on the game. and. You know that stuff is is outside my remit, and just I'm just planning for um, England next week. So the players, it's been a weak organisation. Um, yeah. Players decided over the next few days they want them to play that game. Would you support? Them? Um. No, no. I mean, I I, I completely support the, the stance that they're taking in terms of uh, wanting to get. Um, some resolution about the, the issues that they have, um, but I think there's a lot more involved in terms of, you know, a lot more things at stake in terms of, um, you know, ensuring that that fixture does take place. And so, um, but you know, that's like I've said, I'm supportive of, of the players and the things that they're trying to trying to do. Um, and my role is just to prepare the team for for next week. What's the move? Players well, you've known these players for many years. What's the, what's the mental health of your players? There was a suggestion that one of them was taking antidepressants. Is that true? I've got no idea. I don't, I don't know the medical conditions of, of players, so um, you'll need to talk to, to that player and who that is. So, um, you know, if that's, if, if that's the case, then, you know, we're here to support. You know, the players as much as we possibly can from a from an organisation and from from a management point of view, and so um, yeah, I mean, I think you know, I've only I've only heard that sort of story second hand about about that. Would you expect your medical team to tell you if one of the players was on antidepressants? Absolutely not. That would be a, a breach of uh, confidentiality. Um, and I would be very unhappy if uh, any of my medical staff breached that confidentiality of a player for whatever medical condition. That would be completely out of line. And I would be very unhappy with my medical staff for sharing that information. If, if a player, uh, for whatever condition he's got, for whatever things that he's taking for, for medical reasons, wants to keep that confidential, then I'm, I'm sure that anyone in this room would understand that. Uh, the Water Union issued a statement last night basically said players have been paid over the odds for years. Um, there's no manoeuvre, no room for manoeuvre. How helpful is 
points out to you as a negotiating position? With regard to what? With regard to getting the players to perform in your team. Well, the, tra the players have been great in the last few days in terms of the way that they've they've, they've got a, a side issue, a separate issue that they want sorted. But when it's come to the rugby in terms of preparing for the game, they've been they've been fantastic in the way that they've prepared in the last few days. And um, obviously, there's been ongoing discussions with them and with uh, with the, hopefully with the union to, to and the PRGB to get um, get things sorted out. So, uh, with regard to that. You can't blame the players for being offered contracts and money. I mean, you know, if someone comes and offers you 30 or 40 grand more than you're on now, you know, if you, your salary goes up to 300 um, from 260 that you're on now, um, then, you know, who, how can you blame the players for, for accepting contracts? And that's, um, so it's a little bit disingenuous to say that um, the players have been paid too much money from, from a union's point of view because it's in no way is it their fault that those, those contracts have been negotiated by by the regions or the agents through the players. So I, I don't see how um, how it's how it's a fault of theirs. Um, the bottom line is that you know, we've been overspending in Wales for a number of years and, and some of the regions in, in financial difficulty and that's that's the that's the situation. Um, it's a it's a bigger picture than that. It's not it's not these guys are not representing the Welsh rugby team. They're representing everybody in Wales and every player in Wales who back at their back at their regions who are got uncertain futures and you know, there's a huge amount at stake about where the game goes and what goes forward and you know are we going to have four regions are we going to be three regions or two regions and then that that affects a, a lot of people and so you know, a lot of players in the squad because they're international players are probably from regard from my regard are probably a little bit more secure than um, than the players in, in, in the regions who currently haven't been offered contracts or are, are unsure of the future and so that's my understanding is that's what what they're fighting for. It's not about it's not about these guys versus the WAU. It's about a collective group of all the players in Wales wanting to get these um, get a resolution from the issues that have been been faced. Yeah, very much so. I think it is a collective, and it's. Um, it's the game itself and the population, the playing population in, in Wales at this current time. I think I'd like to take the opportunity to thank on behalf of the players the support that has been shown from the public and ex-players, uh, in particularly in the last you know 24 hours week, because of obviously things appear to have come to a head. Um, it's just disappointing that as players, a lot of them are in court in the middle again. Um, you know, it's the perennial conversation about funding, who has what, um, court in the middle between PRB and the regions and the union. Um, and it's disappointing that you know we're 20 years into regional rugby, and you know it's the same things that have come around again. We've had uh, banding system, project reset. You know, I remember 2019 we met uh, about potential mergers, um, and the game has survived all of those things. And I, unfortunately, it's, it's come to a point now where people are being affected. That, um, there's potential to affect families. Um, and the difficulty is there's almost a, a restraint in the fact of players are coming to a point where they have no option. Um, this current period has come to a head after 18 months. Um, this was supposed to be sorted a long time ago. Um, and it's come to a head in the fact that even players that might find the opportunity or have the opportunity to go somewhere else might not get that now because other, other teams are filling their rosters. Um, obviously, we appreciate um, there's a strain uh, you know, everywhere financially because of um, you know the pandemic, etc., and people are still recovering. But again, I stress the fact that the players haven't had a voice, whether it be through the WRPA, uh, and decisions have been unilaterally made, or we find out from you guys what's happening with people's futures, which you know isn't ideal in any professional uh, environment or work environment. 
and I think that's the, the disappointing thing is that the, I think the basic treatment of players uh, and the unprofessional, unprofessional nature or continued unprofessional nature and the dealings of things is, is massively disappointing. So um, we need to, you know, unfortunately it's been highlighted. Uh, just on a similar theme to what Aaron Wink was mentioning, really, you conducted an interview four years ago. You mentioned that players were last to be considered, they were sort of last in the queue. Can you comprehend that we, four years down the line, four years ago, we were having the regions were uniting prior to that Scotland game at Murrayfield, there were discussions. But can you comprehend that this? Uh, uncertainty in a different guy is, is still engulfing most um, <clears throat> I think it's I think it's a collective responsibility and I, was, I mentioned about the Players Association and, and Alan will, will know that for a number of years I've stressed to them that you need to be stronger as a group, you need to have a voice, you need to as he's described us, you need a voice on PRGB, you need to be involved in, in, in um, you know, things like the 60 cap rule, how that affects players, um, whatever issues are. And, uh, and I think you know, it's come to a time now where there is hopefully going to be uh, a much stronger voice uh, around the table. And it's, yeah, it's disappointing that um, we've got issues at the moment that have been ongoing and, and we haven't been able to, to find an agreement over you know, a period. I think there's been frustrations from both sides. Um, and from from the players, it's it's finally come to a head. I mean, just, just one, what I mentioned, his job is, is to coach the team, prepare the team. But you, you're a professional, obviously, but you will need equipment that these things don't affect you. Yeah, I think I think we're very fortunate. We we we're all involved in a sport and a job that we love, and you know to to fathom the fact that we, you know, there's talk that we might not do that because of the severity of the situation. Is very real, but it's the last thing we want to do. Um, I thought Brad Davis did an excellent piece about um, the situation. I, I can tell you, every player wants to play rugby, um, and we're fully aware of the privilege that we have, whether it be regional, international. But we can't have, be under the guillotine and be used the you know the emotive side of things when you know ultimately the, this is a career, this is a job, um, and again being caught in the middle and being um, not, I, I suppose held to ransom at times on um, other people's issues um, with the same people that are in the regions that have issued these contracts um, and now the same people that are trying to get out of it. It's quite hard to fathom um, having been involved uh, in the game in Wales for such a long time. Thanks. Just in view of what you said, you do strike for the game. It's a very real possibility at this stage. I suppose it is. It'd be hard to deny, uh, but it's the very last, you know, it's the very last option. Um, there's a pe there are people really impassioned. I think ultimately, if you treat people badly for long enough, you get to where we we find ourselves. And again, you know, we realise what we do and how fortunate we are to do it. But if this was any other line of work, other any other industry for this period of time, with this amount of uncertainty, you'd get the same reaction. Um, and we're very respectful to society as a whole, but it comes to a point now where the, the game has to make a decision in which direction, or the game in Wales has to make a decision in which way, which direction it wants to go. So you'd say there's, there's an element of regret, sadness, I guess, would be the word that it's come to this point. Very much so, but I think, again, what, what Gat said, you don't want to see players in their early 20s not knowing where their career is going to go. You know, you want to see it where. You want to do it in the enjoyment sense of have opportunity and go anywhere, but they're curtailed at the minute with sort of the, some of the conditions, uh, and like I alluded to earlier, the unilateral decisions that have been made, the lack of negotiation, so you're almost boxed in as a player um, with no option, which which isn't ideal for anyone. I'll, I'll take you next week to stop this week with or just try and watch Um I think the, as Gats's point about the vo having a voice, it's funny at times we just want an ear in the room to know what's going on. I think that's as good as, yes, we want a voice as well. Um, we've discussed about the 60 cap rule, reviewing that if not scrapping it, that, because I think that's been come out, so I'm comfortable in saying that. And obviously the, the, the fixed variable part of the contract, which again is the, the constraints. Um, now I know 
there's rebalances and things that have to be addressed financially. We're all fully aware of that. But again, it comes down to people being boxed in in their options um, on both sides with the 60 cap rule and obviously the, the contractual um, obligations. So it's ultimately in, in, in motion now because the dialogue has been had. Uh, and again, as players, we, we've voiced our concerns. We've, we've done that probably through a bit more um, of a messy way than we would like to because of certain things in you know, the last 24, 48 hours. Um, but it's ultimately down to the regions and the union now to, 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 to work on an option. Because, um, again, I stress, like that said, and as a speaker on behalf of the player group and the play, players in Wales, we just want to play rugby. Um, you know, and <laughs> we want to get back to normal, enjoy what we're doing. Uh, we went to the dinner and we were present at the dinner. Uh, we were sure to show face and thank all the sponsors because we're, again, very fortunate the sponsors we have. Um, you know, even, even other regions, the sponsors we have there, because a lot of those sponsors and uh, benefactor sponsors of the regions have kept the game going for the last 20 years in Wales uh, because, like I alluded to earlier, the perennial question of funding and where it's going to come from. So we, we, we went there and thanked the sponsors and um, did our obligations there. We've got time for one more in the live section with Rob. Do you um, concur with Warren that the WRPA hasn't done its job as well as it might have? Um, I think it's got better year on year. I think, um, obviously, again, um, ha having been involved uh, on that exec board for a while, um, there were times the deliverables weren't met. I think now uh, we've got a much better foundation. We have a CEO um, that, that's seemingly in control. We have. Um, WRPA reps in each region, so a lot of stuff going on, but then we haven't had an opportunity, that's that's the big thing, the WRPA hasn't had the opportunity to have a voice or an ear with PRB on the decisions that ultimately affect players. How do you get to that? Problem? Well, that, that was, sorry, that was one of the requests that um, was put in yesterday, um, and, you know, we're very comfortable to put in uh, whoever goes in there has an NDA and, you know, it stays stays in there, it's just informed on the things we need to know. Because the disappointment thing, disappointing thing is that obviously you guys fight, get to find out a lot more of what goes on in those meetings before we do. Yeah, it's one of the things I've been stressing with the players. You know, you've got to be part of the discussions and being around the table. And it's important. And um, you know, it's pleasing that they have taken a long time. And um, you know, hopefully the, the, the motions are in place for that to take place. Because you can't make decisions and make rules and regulations and things without without having player involvement. It's, it's important that everyone understands and everyone's part of the consultation process. And Alan, if you're selected next week, you could rarely go and play to head to the end. Oh, if you, there's a, there's a bit of selection goal. You can ask him about the selection side of things. But I know every, I, I reiterate what I said, every player wants to play the game. Uh, so, you know, selected or not, but I'm, I'm not involved. I still feel like I'm playing. Um, I want to get back to the job, but also I think t to protect the game and ensure that the game goes well um, for the generations to come, we need to sort this out now. We can't go back into this cycle of uncertainty because it's not healthy. Okay, so that's um, the end of the live press conference, and we now have a Sunday writers' briefing just with Warren. Can I just thank everyone as well for the support and the comms on all of this because it has been a bit quite stressful for everyone, so it's much appreciated. Thank you.